Hey, what's up, YouTube family? How are you guys doing? Well, you know what? I finally went and did it. I finally did it. Oh, it's behind that. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, tiny boat, trailer, got it fixed up. But what I'm really excited for, this is the Sun Dolphin Pro 120, I believe. Yes, nice little John looking boat. Um, super excited for it, about to test it out. Finally have the chance to test out this guy right here. This gray dude right here, just got him from a friend. I'm excited to try it out. Um, we did try and failed with another gas motor, but I finally got a good enough deal to where I had to take it and I got it. And so this is a video of you watching me try and figure out this gas motor. Um, stay tuned, thanks for watching. Let's get this boat out on the water and, uh, and maybe catch a fish. Thanks for watching, stay tuned. See how much this little guy takes to fill up. So that was a dollar. It took one dollar to fill this thing up. Let's go. jacket but the fact that I'm using a gas motor and I'm out here by myself it's just a little scary it's a little unsettling there's always been a bunch of tragic tragic incidents and a lot of them could have been avoided if they just had a life vest so um, we'll get this guy strapped on not very comfortable not very fashionable but hey if it's gonna keep me safe um, just why not throw it on gas motor is been dropped in everything's looking good so far we got the gas, everything else. We're gonna pull the choke out of the gas motor. There is gas, it's in neutral. We're gonna give it a tug. gets removed the motor dies so if in, in an event of you getting ejected from the boat you want to make sure this guy's clipped on you so people like to put them around the wrist so that's what I'm gonna do right now um, and then you tie the key to the key goes right there on the kill switch and that's all there is to it we're just gonna fish for a little bit and then probably get ready to call it Take the life jacket off actually what I'm gonna leave this life jacket on just for uh, safety reasons then we're gonna cover some ground with the popper Smally. 
Yes, popper fish, dude. Just running up along these banks right here, and this little guy came up and smoked it. Solid fish, little tiny guy. <laughs> yes, boom! Hey, buddy. Yes, on a popper again. That's what I'm using. Didn't even come out to fish, really, just came out to. Um, just a little bit out. Junior, why you hit the papa, Junior? Here's another one. Again on that popper. Oh, crazy guy. On a popper. A little smallie. They are loving it. It's two fish within, I don't know, about 10 minutes. So all I'm really doing with this popper is I'm casting it out really close to the bank. And then I'm leaving it there and giving those fish a time to kind of key in and locate where that, where that popper hit. So right now I'm just giving it just a few twitches, just enough to get that pop, that signature pop sound. And, uh, and then fish to the rest. And I like to fish all of my top water um, with braid. So that's what I'm currently using. A lot more sensitive, which you feel the fish when they hit. So um, again, I'm just casting it maybe, I don't know, four or five feet. Something just blew up right there. About four or five feet from the, from the shore. And again, just letting it stop right when I cast it out. I'll give an example again. So again, I'm taking that popper, casting it out. When it hits the water, I give it about five seconds for those fish to kind of find out what just happened in the water. So once I got that popper in the water and those ripples are gone, I'm able to give it those first couple of pops. Stop it, pop it. Give it that three seconds. Like I said, typically when a fish hits it, they're gonna hit it on that pause. You gotta make sure you're walking a bit. Like that. Right there. Got this. On the paw. On the paws. Dang it, I can't land these fish. There was that fish. He right when I paused it, boom, he whacked it. Let's see if we can get back in there. Maybe find a couple more. Try to get in that location. I'm gonna pause it there. Now we're gonna give it those couple of twitches. Oh! I didn't you see that? I didn't even need to. That bass was just there. He waited for it. And I didn't even need to give it any action. He came up and popped it. What is it? Uh, foul hooked a little small jaw. Check it out again. I didn't even need to give it any action. Just dropped the bait right there. This bass didn't like that. His bait was on top of his house probably. And he came up, he swiped at it. And again, that's why we, that's why it's important. So cool. So cool. Alright. Not sure when the camera died, but apparently it did. All right. Didn't have too much time to come out today. So. There's one. There's another small one. Probably the biggest one of the day. Alrighty. Alright. Another Smalley on the popper. They love it. Oh yeah. Definitely the biggest the biggest uh, fish of the day. So again, there's that Smalley. It's a decent Smalley right there. Ugh. Let's get this guy back in. He wants to really go back. Right. A 
again, it's real key that you get this bait as close as you can to the shore. Twitch, 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 pause. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch, twitch. There's one. He hit it. Little guy. Oh, he's gone. So some keys, casting. Right there, I'm about four feet from the shore. I'm gonna give it that pop, those first pops. Watching that bait, there's one. Got one, another one. There he is, another junior. Smalley, another Smalley. Little red-eyed bandit. All right, a little Smalley. Beautiful fish, check out the pattern on this guy. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. All right, see you bud. Okay, now we're just, like I said, it's literally the same thing. I ain't mixing nothing up, I ain't changing anything. I want to get a better look at that, that popper I'm using. It's this guy right here. He's been the money right now. Ooh, dang, that was a big one. That was a bigger one. I'm all knotted up now. I'm in my own death trap. Right, going again. Same area. Three feet from the shore. There it is. Oh, there you go. I felt that weight on her. Felt that weight on her. She hit it. You always give it those couple seconds to uh, really feel the weight of that fish. Nice. Another one. A decent size one. All right. Let's get her over here and uh, let's see if we can get after that big one that I just saw. All right. Another smolly. Beautiful smolly. See, you, buddy. Typically, I give it about 10 pops from the shore, and then, uh, you know, when I know it's going to be deeper water, like a drop off or something, just pull it back in and, and get it ready to cast again. Little one. Another little one. Hit that popper. There she goes. It's too small. Oh, look how clear that water is. I mean, it's almost thing near crystal clear, and I'm hitting it. I'm trying to get this uh, popper as close as I can, right in here. And definitely, those fish are seeing it. A couple of things top one is you want you want braid you obviously want a top water bait and you want to just fish it slow you know you want to hit that water pause it give it that action stop it and also mix it up I mean I go one two three pause one two three pause but you go one, two, pause, one, two, three, four, pause, one, pause, one, one, three. The possibilities are endless. Find out what these fish want. The only reason why I keep throwing the one, two, three is because, I mean, that's what they want, clearly. And uh, well, there's no point in me mixing it up, trying to crack the code of what these fish want. Some days they want two pauses. Some days they want no pauses. Some days they want three pauses. And so, yeah. Got another one of them small jaws over here. There's another one. No largies, just smallies. See you, bud. Again, missed him again. I'm not setting that hook that hard because this line's been a little shady. This last weekend I went fishing with it. Every time I casted it, it was popping off. So I don't know if it's frayed. I'm gonna have to change the line out. It's a little risky just fishing with it right now. If I were to catch a giant, there's a good chance I won't land her because this line's gonna break. <sighs> don't be afraid to throw a bait. Throw a bait whenever you want. These bass, no one knows what's on the menu. 
usually what you can see on top, that's kind of similar to what's going to be down below. And of course, smallies, they love rocks. So I'm really going to focus and really hit every inch of this spot because I feel like it's going to really house a lot of those uh, smallies. So um, like I said, let's just, I'm going to stay here a little bit, probably work it a little bit more and see if we can produce. Spit it out, spit it out. I had a decent hook set on that one. What's awesome is on my Apple Watch, I uh, always get these alerts that I'm exercising and I'm really just working a dang popper. <laughs> Who says fishing isn't fitness? How about this bass fitting this bait in his mouth? motor but if you enjoyed this video as much as I did thanks for watching really appreciate the support hope you learned something if you learned something I appreciate that like and subscribe um, also if you want to leave me a comment down below if you want to see me do more videos on how I fish baits or certain setups that I use or why I use them feel free to drop that comment down below thanks for watching I'll see you later. Yep. Oh, little catfish. Dang, that's so cool.